Welcome back to Get Sticky TV. And today, I'm giving you one sick individual named Brian Coey. Here's his story. He's a sickle. She happened here, and I picked it up, and it was heavy. And I held it in my hand, and I was like, what in the world is this? What in the world? Is this not like maggot covering something? I don't know. I better take it in the sink. So I carried it out to the sink, and it was double bags. So I ripped up in one bag, and I saw an old boy. And I'm like, Was in the second bag. Okay. So <sighs> so I didn't open the second bag. Okay. What? Well, as the story goes, Brian Cohey was out looking for an individual to murder. He then found a homeless guy sleeping. Here's a little bit more of his arrest and the way he acted during his arrest. He's a sick one. Okay, so parents have some concerns of some stuff they may have found in your room? Um, yeah, I believe so. And what would it be? A human head and hands. I say, hold up, wait a minute. Something ain't right. You have anything on you? He's gonna cut, poke, hurt, stick me anything without reaching for nothing? Don't reach for nothing. My phone and my oh, wallet. That's okay. It. Well, I'm gonna have you face out and put your hands on top of your head for me real quick. I just wanna make sure you interlace your fingers for me real quick, all right? I'm gonna. Now you'll notice as the police is arresting this guy or supposedly arresting this guy who they just found supposedly a head and hands. Look how nice they treat him. Look how they don't even basically put him in handcuffs. Look how they just sit him in the car nice and gently and make sure he's okay, whether he likes air conditioning and different things like that. Just listen to this. You are going to be shocked. Listen to it. Bullshit. Have you walk over here. You're going to sit in the back of my partner's patrol car for a minute, okay? Not yet. Okay. Just sit back there and hang out for me, okay? Can you walk me inside, let, let, please? Let's walk you off this. Okay. Let me do it. You go inside. Well, let's, let's, let's stay out here with let's me for a minute. Let's sit down. Come on, sit down, dude. Can, can I go in there and verify here? Oh, first? yeah, please. Yeah, we haven't seen it. Yeah, we okay. haven't looked at it. It's under the towel. Okay. And yeah, I just... Annie, say what you might then give up. Uh, hey, just make sure that guy goes in the car first. I have to check in. You can go in the safe, right? Uh, uh well, yeah, okay. Right there. No, yeah. there. No, yeah. no, yeah. no, House is empty. Had a bag, you know, about what happened this week, man. Okay. She said there's a bag in his closet, and she opened it up, and she called me and said, get over here right now. I covered it with a towel. Okay. Let me see it. We didn't want him to run. I don't want to look at it. Yeah. Sit back there and hang out, okay? How are you? I'm good, sir. How are you? You said your name is Brian? Yeah. Uh, I'm not feeling too well. You're not feeling too well? All right. No, these past few days, I've been very, very that's understandable. So what we're gonna have you do here is I'm just gonna have you sit in the back here, okay? okay. I'm gonna turn on the air for you in a second. That way you're not too hot. Are you a hot-blooded or cold-blooded kind of guy? I am. I'm sure you all heard that BS. Very cold, but not for cold. Well, no, actually, sorry. Hot-blooded. Hot -blooded. So you prefer the cold. Okay, fantastic. Thank all right. So hop in here. I know you're tall, so it's a little bit of a... Now, at this point, you he's already admitted to having a head in hands. He's already admitted to this. Now, as you can see, he they have yet to even put handcuffs on this guy, who's already admitted to having a head in hand in hands in his house. And his mom has found it, which just called the cops. Tight squeeze, but like I said, I'll get that air on for you. Sorry about that. Alright. Now, I'm about to play you the mother's 911 call. Here it is. On March 1, 2021, police at Grand Junction, Colorado received this chilling 911 call. A mother has just discovered a disturbing secret hidden within her son's closet. Even more terrifying, he's currently just outside the house while she makes this call for help. 
Why do you think it's that? Because it looks like it's a thorn ear. Is it all, is it bloody or is it like anything like that? Just can you just come? Do I have to take a picture and send it to you? What's can you the address? Come? The dispatcher tries to get as much information as possible to make sense of this shocking call and give officers an idea of what they might be walking into. Is your son there now? He just pulled up. We wanted to make sure he was here before we called. How old is he? 19. Okay. And when I was finished stabbing him, he took out his last breath, a grunt, and his head was halfway cut off in stabs. All the while, no, actually, after I killed him, I just couldn't stop saying stinky, dirty, dirty, stinky, stinky. It wasn't, I wasn't selling anything, but... Then why were you saying that? I don't know. Okay. But you remember doing it, so... Yeah. I suppose it was just me speaking out my mind at that moment. It was a pouring out of mind. Were you worried about, I mean, this looks like it's pretty close to the road and stuff. Somebody seen you well, or catching it? it was 11 p.m., okay. so not many were driving by. Well, it was behind the pillar. So, like, here's the road. Uh-huh. It was here. So people would only see a brief thing here and here. So were you worried about him seeing you? I was worried about one of them stopping. What did you think would happen if somebody... Well, if they looked, well, it was quite dark under there, so they wouldn't have seen the guy unless they looked. Um, They would have seen me holding a bloody 12-inch knife, wearing gloves, and wearing a mask to conceal my identity, a face mask. Okay. So you weren't doing it for COVID, you were doing it to hide your face? Um, partially. Social distancing. <laughs> right. Um, uh, yeah, but no one stopped. And I'm just like, huh, proves the bystander effect. As you see, I had to do a story on this Brian Covey, one sick individual. He eventually was sentenced to life in prison. Here's the ending of the story. Hearing started with the outpouring of grief for Warren Barnes, a beloved member of the downtown community. And Kohi, the man admitting to the murder, finally stopped typing on his keyboard to hear testimony from the people who lost the reading man. Newly laid flowers now blow in the wind along with books and litter at the site where Warren Barnes was brutally murdered, decapitated, dismembered and mutilated February 27th, 2021. After living a nightmare for nearly two years in pain and anguish, Brian Cohey Jr.'s many victims will suffer in silence no more. On the 15th day of the People vs. Cohey, victims confronted the murderer face to face in courtroom 11 at the Mesa County Justice Center sharing the tragic lifelong impact of Kohi's horrific actions. More than a dozen of Warren's family and friends spoke, including his sister Geraldine, who Warren called on her birthday, February 26th, just one day before his murder. One of Warren's nieces said Kohi hurt his own family, plus hurt everyone with ADHD and autism spectrum disorder and will burden every taxpayer in Colorado throughout his life in prison. One of Barton's cousins said Warren had a thirst for knowledge and reading. She said Kohi's diabolical drive to become a famous serial killer in the end ironically brought her fragmented family together. Another family member told the court being homeless doesn't make a person's life less valuable. She reminded them Warren was not a throwaway person. Finally, the friend who took the picture of Warren seen by so many said the hardworking man who was so giving and loved birds will never again repeat the phrase and you also after she told him good morning. Barnes family and friends aren't the only victims. Nearly every person sharing their impact statement also expressed sympathy for Kohi's family, especially Terry Kohi, the defendant's mother. I continue to live in a place of darkness and sadness and that my own family and friends are suffering because of me. And I'm just like, this is the She ended her statement begging the court to show Brian mercy and asking for better mental health care, saying the odds were stacked against Brian from the start. Judge Richard Gurley said after 37 years of serving different capacities in the court system, including 16 years as a judge, this is one of the most horrific cases he's ever experienced. Judge Gurley sentenced Kohi to the rest of his natural life in prison, plus 13 and a half years without parole. Justice served, and while Warren is gone, he will never be forgotten. R.I.P. to the guy who lost his life in this tragedy. 
I just want to say thanks for checking out Igistiki TV. I just had to do a story on that sicko. Just to show you people. Thank you.